بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم اولا تلقيت بمزيد من وفاه المغفوره لها السيده غاله منوال باسمي وباسم المدرسه وكل طاقمها وعلى محمد يحيوي نتقدم بتعازينا الخالصه may she rest in peace إن شاء الله تحسب من الشهداء. Good afternoon, my dedicated friends, teachers, students, university teachers, inspectors. I feel very, I feel very honored and privileged to work on that topic. I have been touring Algeria, and each time, I am. Overwhelmed by questions related to textbooks. I tried in my way to filter all your concerns, all your worries, all your anxieties. And suddenly, as you all, I spent some time on Facebook and I read your concerns, your anxieties. And you really acquainted me with so, so many inspiring ideas. And then the best way to start this webinar is to start with what I learned from you. So I went and tried to make an analysis, get acquainted with your concerns. And this is what I found. I called it me and my blue space. This is what teachers always send me example of tests, any flashcards about past simple and past continuous. What do we do in, what do you do in the learners projects? Could you please provide me a clear rule for pronunciation? I need tutorial sessions. I have started training my learners of 4MS. I have finished, I listen and do, still three, I pronounce two, I practice, what should I do? Can you send me a lesson plan? Any sample, please? Second term, second test. Help, simplifying the lesson, giving a dose, how to present the lesson, how to manage time between the lesson and their slow speed while writing. Please give me the say, some ideas about the presentation of the present perfect. I'm really confused. Tests. Please, what lesson after Trif Talks? So I've taken the example and I have come to a terrible conclusion that nobody is dealing or asking about the textbook itself. Most of the concerns are about lesson plans. Preparing lesson plans is not that difficult if we have a shared understanding on how to use the textbook. One of the greats, one of my great trainers said, the textbook is a good master, but a bad servant. A good master, if you know how to use it, the bad servant if you don't know how to use it. But fortunately, many teachers are doing great work. I followed them. Most of the time, they come from very small villages. They post their work and they read it, sometimes at their request, 
and I can say Algeria is in safe hands. So today I'm here to share your concern. Training is not giving recipes or tips, never. You will never develop if you get a recipe or you get tips. Remember the first time when I met you, I said, think of the conceptual level, be an architect. A lesson plan is very easy. It's like the song said, just another brick in the wall. So now when you know the concern, you will easily prepare it. And this experience I will share with you come from the field. This year, I have visited 10 wheelhouse. Last year, I trained some inspectors in Tiaras. I got, I was, as I told you, overwhelmed by questions. And they were, all over, they were asking me about the answers. And I said, they can't give you the answer because you know the answer. And I will tell you at the, by the end of this uh, seminar. So now I'll give a presentation. I wish we had the workshop because we have a new paradigm concerning training. Training in the world has changed. If you want to read about how to use the textbook, you can find it. But now the new paradigm is training is transforming. That's why in a competency-based approach, during the training, if we had a workshop, each time you produce, it's not just lecturing. You produce to see the effectiveness of my presentation. And then we can say whether I have reached my objectives or not. But anyway, we will share everything. And I'm sure by the end of this presentation, we will have a debate. And today we'll have two hours. We have decided to start at two because at five is the, the starting of the quarantine. So let me start with you my presentation. So we said uh, for our friends, new teachers or the university teachers or the inspectors, we have called this using the textbook of English, the big challenges. I have selected textbook of year four, but it applies to all. The examples will be taken from year four and we've selected year four because it's a transit from the middle school to the secondary school. So our colleagues from the secondary school maybe could be inspired with us. So the big challenges. Before speaking about the big challenges, we have to ask these questions, right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the big challenge is, here it is. Okay, if you see on my left, I have the curriculum. And on my right, the course book. This is the everlasting question. Am I using the textbook without any reference to the curriculum? Then it's a total fa failure and then you will have starting, I have not finished, I cannot finish. You are right, but you are wrong. This is a very Shakespearean uh, statement. We will see now how to make the ends meet. So, I try to understand your concern. Last time, the school sent you some questions and I went through them 
And I found tips. I'm not going to give you tips. I want to make you a professional. I want to share with you your experience. Because tips, you can use it, you can fail. And I've been all my life against ready-made things. So this is the agenda of today. We have three parts. Adapting the textbook to the curriculum and not the reverse. Two years ago, this was the big mistake. The sequence analysis and preparing your sequence. If you, the information I got from the blue space, all of them rotated around preparing your sequence, your lesson plan. This is the easiest one. So I tried to figure out with these drawings, maybe the textbook does not fit me. The sequence analysis, before preparing my sequence, my lesson plans, have I understood what I am expected to do in terms of exit profile, in terms of competencies, in terms of cross-curricular competencies, in terms of cross-references, in terms of values, in terms of domain? If you have not done that, then it's a failure. Then you prepare your sequence, the easiest one, think. Okay. Preparing work, I just advise you to tolerate, tolerate each other, accept each other, work with each other, support each other. We are not in, in, the, in the era of blaming or rejecting. I seize this opportunity to thank all those who trained me and who were the first textbook writers in Algeria, namely Mr. Kisserli from Gijel, Mr. Menasri Lairahmo from Algiers, Mr. Bereksi, who was one of them, a great trainer from Oran, Mrs. Tahar Bouchet, Mr. Hamdad, those were the pioneers, but they suffered a lot. They suffered a lot in Algeria. Needless to say, why? So now let's have shift to something else. Question put it in mind. What's the relationship between a restaurant, the textbook, and the wedding? You may be very surprised why this choice. Sometimes when I don't sleep, I get inspired. <laughs> so I get inspired, I think it over, and do I. In the restaurant, or at this restaurant, we eat. Textbook, we use it. And the wedding, we choose the ring. Okay, now we will see the difference and then what they have in common. At the restaurant, that sometimes they give you the menu by just saying by route, we have, we have, we have. You, you know it in Arabic. Or sometimes you want, okay, just, I want to eat a la carte. You want to choose. When your parents choose for you a husband or a wife, say, let me choose, please. Okay? And then textbook sometimes, I'm fed up, I can't finish. Or sometimes you worship. I love my textbook. So the relationship between the three of them is a question of choice. When you choose, you are free. Right. And 
this is how I wanted to start. How to make a choice when you use your textbook. The choice is not conducted in a very arbitrary way. The choice are based to criteria and indicator. If you choose a wife, criteria. If you choose a husband, criteria. If you go to the restaurant, criteria. Textbook is not just turning the pages. Sometimes I was a victim when a student just being trained, open your book, and 22, do the activity. Right, so this is a question of choice, the right choice. And now I try to figure out the behavior, the worries, the anxieties of teachers. Oh my God, I'm fed up. How can I deal with I learn to integrate? Many situations, help please. Please send me a lesson about the passive voice. Too many documents. Can you imagine 64 listening tasks? I love this sentence. I will answer about it in a few minutes. So, and I asked myself about all these questions. Nobody asked about the curriculum. Nobody said how I will transfer or how I will illustrate the principles of the curriculum in the classroom practice. And then the big disconnect. Sometimes you don't know why this disconnect or this mismatch because you bumped into a classroom, open your course book and start. Fortunately, only a few. Others tried, but perhaps did find difficulties. The shift from structural based approach to competency based requires using the brain. I tell you something. Last week, MBI organized workshops about the startup. They invited outstanding professors from Algeria and from outside Algeria, but all, most of them are Algerians. And I, I followed this webinar and I was happy. I retained some words from the conferences, projects, citizenship, working together, ethics, group work, accepting each other, tolerating and daring. And I said, my God, those who will create their startup are those who are finished their studies at the university. And the school, we have prepared them somehow. We have prepared them how to socialize with each other. We have prepared them how to build their projects. Perhaps sometimes you will say with difficulties, I do agree, right? So the, our teaching learning process was oriented about forming a true citizen. A true citizen is someone who can solve problems, whatever the situation. Then we are happy. I am happy that what the school has started with all its difficulties, because putting into practice needs training. Course book or textbook writers are not responsible for the training. There is another 
group who is in charge of that. But we help, right? But at least not understanding or finding difficulties is acceptable, provided that you have read the documents at hand. And I keep on. Now, this is a survey I conducted with teacher trainers, future teacher trainers. These are the questions they asked. You may ask them, the program is overloaded. We can't finish. The listening scripts are too long. We don't know the difference between the four situations. Many of us teachers don't know where to teach grammar. We don't know when to deal with formative assessments. We don't see the difference between I learn to integrate and I think and write. We wonder if we teach values, if we sh should teach values. Some of us deal with phonetic transcription in the section I pronounce. The texts are too long. There are many difficult words in the reading texts. We don't know which text to teach in I read and do section. We wonder if we should teach I read for pleasure. The questions were selected from the field. And I gave a template and there was, I agree with two columns. I agree, I disagree. If you agree, why? If you disagree, why? And after the training, <coughs> one of the participants asked me, sir, can you give us the answer of that? I said, no. He said, why? I said, because you know the answer. He said, how can I know the answer? All the answers about your worries are in the teacher's guide. And he was that man I remember, was very honest with me. He said, feeling a little bit shy. I have not read the teacher's guide. I said, my God, you have not read the teacher's guide as a teacher and you will be future trainer. How? How come? Then being honest, a read and ask question. We will see about all, and it can be perhaps in the debate, you can ask other questions. I have selected them. Each time you can go back. And I just want to, to quote something from my friend, uh, inspector of biology from the wilaya of Buira. I said, Makhlouf, do you face the same problems? He said, yes, why? He said, because they think that the textbook is a compilation of lesson plans. And he said, I'm suffering in the training. And say, do they want you to give them ready-made lessons? I say, yes. The experts all over the world, when you say, I write lesson plans to teacher, they think this is an insult to, to, to the intelligence of teachers. We have provided lesson plans of sequence in the teacher's guide, but this is one way to do it. You can change. But when you read the lesson plans we have provided, they are in conformity with the principle or the main components of the curriculum. And we will see this idea, we have not finished the problem. You have not finished, the question is, you have finished the content of the textbook or the component of the curriculum. And believe me, if we meet and we work together, you can finish 
by March. By March. Right. Whether you have four sequences, three or five, the way is when you have this ability and you have it to illustrate the components. Remember when we dealt with planning learning, I said the main question, what am I expecting my learners to do by the end of the lesson, by the end of the week, by the end of the year? Let's say this month, I will work on narration with a number of grammar points. In the old system, we have one unit, one grammar point. And life is not that. When you speak, you can describe, you can narrate, you can argue. In the school, we have targeted the focus and it's something. So now when you reflect on your learning in your reflective journal, you see, perhaps you can write, I saw many uh, reflective journals today, my lesson, I succeeded. My lesson about the simple past, the possible. Good. But today your student narrated. Today your student reported an event. Today your student described. Today your student gave prescriptions about the fact of being in good health, and then you, you have succeeded. The questions then you said, and you are right, I got questions. Sir, you see when we see the barren papers, we really have a deep feeling of frustration. We want to release. Yes, there's still a disconnect, but please at least start by covering the content, the content covered in the relationship with the curriculum. And then in the curriculum, needless to remind you, there are many, many components. Unfortunately, some teachers this focus on the syllabus, on the linguistic contents. The syllabus is a part of the curriculum. Remember one of your friend reminded me, I think if, and the memory is always good. They have a very good memory and this is my bad side. He say, you think Muhammad Arsqi, to form a good citizen. Yes, a good citizen is someone who can interact, who can interpret, who can produce, because remember the challenges, everything we learn in class should match a behavior outside. Those learners will travel. Some of them will need the use of English. And the use of English in a competent way, not describing, I can describe in Arabic or in French, our students are very good at grammar, but yet when you ask them to produce a piece of writing, they do poorly. So this is the situation. The list is not, is by no means exhaustive. You can add as many, but are you thinking about the lesson plans? Are you thinking about the, the, the content of the course book? And a friend, Abdul Hakim, one day said, look, he's a trainer, say. You have in Algeria those who wrote the curriculum and others wrote the textbook. And what's the role of the teachers? We will see what's the role. But before this, this is the common things that we should know. 
what all the stakeholders should know and be at the same level of understanding. If we are not at the same level of understanding, we will keep on throwing allegation at each other, condemning each other, instead of trying to understanding each other. I said, even within your school, tolerate each other, work with each other, share with each other, share your concern. Don't wait, as I say, oh, send me a lesson about the passive voice. Send me a lesson about prepositions. No. Sometimes in a debate with some university teachers and said in book two, in the sequence, me and my health. They blamed us and they said, why have you introduced about snake bite scorpions? And said, it's a very good question. You know about bleeding, cough, headache, stomach ache. We have our brothers and sisters in the South who face the snake bites, the scroll, they should be able. And from, from this population, some of them will be guide, tourist guides, and they will need this English. That's why we train it, not only in English, what we call family of situation. If you're in Algiers or Bijaya or Oran, you can teach pollution, smoke pollution. You can write a situation about smoke pollution. But in the South, a situation will be written about sandstorms. So we have in this, try to cover all the needs of the Algerian society. Last week, Professor Belgesm Habba gave an interview to Radio City. I followed it. And then we had the chat after. He said, let our learners build their dreams. You're not going to show them a lot of things about. They know everything that is happening in the world. Let them know about the surrounding, what we called me, my world, the world. It's me, understand me. And then the world that is surrounding me and then the world. We will see that we will give an illustration to this after. So I need to, to read the law of orientation. We have provided, given it to all the people we met, mainly trainers. We are, there is a copy in Arabic and a copy in. It's explain the framework of teaching learning in Algeria. The question you ask yourself, do you want a school of memorization or do you want a school of intelligence? So <coughs> the main objectives are, but for you, you need the law to read the law orientation and you need to read the curriculum. The national curriculum guide is for the textbook writers. So for me, I've read the law, I've read the curriculum. Then I will understand the content of the textbook. This is the first step. The second step is how to transfer the content into the classroom practice. If you remember the first webinar, three criteria. The readability. I read something. I try to understand it. Then the transferability. Good. I've transferred it in the classroom. Can my teachers use it? Good. 
you can, I said, in each one, there is an expert sleeping. You can attend a demonstration class and follow it and see whether the teacher has faithfully applied the principle of the curriculum. We, we will have future webinars and we will discuss in details. But now I need you, I want you to understand the foundations of the textbooks. So the course book obeys to principles and criteria defined by the Ministry of Health. And the criteria are aligned with international standards. We will speak about the standard later. So you shift from the law of orientation, the curriculum of English, then to the textbook. These apply to all the subjects. Now each subject has its own exit profile, but all of us have one group exit profile. What do we expect the Algerian learners by the end of the year? What they will be able to do in geography, in biology? And we have many commonalities. For example, in English, I deal with description, which is a part, a component of my exit profile, <laughs> describing the weather using the simple presence. My friend of Arabic deals with description. My friend of French does the same. What about my friend of geography? He does the same, but he will teach the atmospheric pressure. Physics, sorry. My friend of geography will say the changes in climate. My friend of mathematics will teach probability. It may, it will, and we have the same thing. So these students will go out or from the middle school or the secondary school with international standard. Now, this is or the challenges. We have the official curriculum. We talked about it. The textbook. And the teacher's curriculum. Oh, say, what do you mean by the teacher's curriculum? Okay. Sometimes, if you think that a sequence does not appeal to you, you can shift from the official curriculum to the teacher's curriculum. What do we mean by the teacher's curriculum? Teacher's curriculum is concerned the lesson plans, the sequence plans, everything. And the question, you cannot prepare your curriculum at random. You go back to the official curriculum because when you, when you receive the visit of your inspector or trainer, the first question he should ask himself, problem is not negative points, right? He didn't, he has not asked. He's, is he applying the official curriculum? And I, I love, I'm saying it is, how do you make the curriculum talk? If you want to write a textbook, make sure that you made the curriculum talk or using the great linguist transfer its principles. When you read with an evaluator eye, you can say this activity fits the exit profile fits or 
allow us to deal with the three competencies. Allow us to deal with cross curricular. Helps me use the two domains in life and helps me use the cross reference. We are the single textbook in Algeria where we used the principle of cross references. Some teachers ask me, what do you mean by cross references? I say it's written in the guide. If you need to write something, you have to go back to task three to task two. We are preparing those students when they enter the university, whatever the subject, they will deal with the cross references and the school has to prepare them for that. And we have prepared them for that. You will see in a moment when I make an analysis of a sequence. So you are requested to apply the official curriculum. Then your textbook, transfer the principle in class by using your lesson plan. If you think, but with criteria, that it does not fit, go back to the curriculum. But when you present your plan, and you can ask someone else to assess it. Okay, this is your lesson plan. This is your monthly plan. I can see only grammar. Show me, give me the evidence that you are using some components of the curriculum, mainly the exit profile. Excuse me, it's one minute. Excuse me. Yes. Connection. Have you lost the connection? Not the connection? No, no, no. It's okay. Okay, we are so, okay, sorry for this technical. So I read this lesson plan. What the teacher has developed is he dealing with a component of the exit profile? In this lesson, will he deal with one of the two domains, <coughs> the competencies that can be taught separately or interwoven? Then you can see the, te the teacher sorry, succeeded to do so, and we are happy. And the curriculum and the law of orientation spoke about the autonomy of the teacher. You have the good capacities to create your own materials, but don't throw allegations when you don't know what is happening. So this is the big challenge and you are free. And the challenge should turn one of your friends sent in her email, I want to see solution. I love this. We said, be part of the solution and not the problem. Another teacher said, of course, you will have too much work to do preparation. Each Tuesday you meet or you, meet, or you can meet through the social media but be some friends are doing great job mainly in the very remote places and then you can decide oh right be positive i receive sometimes i can't i'm getting old say sir what do you think i said look these are the criteria in your lesson knowledge sequence you have applied all the principles Believe in your capacities. This is very good work. And there is an interconnection between the teacher's curriculum is to decide all your lesson plans. Of course, you, that you can take in the, the textbook and how to use it. Sit, think it over. Remember, I'm quoting David Noonan curriculum writer, selection of content, organization of content, 
and gradation of content. I thank my country for give, having given me the opportunity to be trained by two greats, a great curriculum writer, you can, Kathleen Graves from the United States. She trained me here in Algeria and my team and in the US. And I was trained by one of the greatest textbook writers. You can find his books in Algiers or somewhere, Scott Tenberry. And I sweated during my training. Each time you produce something, say, do it again, write it again. Just to see to, to the extent you can be a trainer or not, right? And big thanks to my two great trainers, Mr. Kisserly and Mr. Bereksi, who, mainly Mr. Bereksi, who showed me the stru super structure of a course book. And then the training I got. Big thanks also to my team. Two of them are teachers being trained by Cambridge or the School for International Training in the USA. And perhaps the, the single textbook writer in Algeria, who is also most of his writings are all over the world, Mr. Shani Abdel Fittah. I want to send my greetings to them all. So next, now I want to start by using my, and the question is how I will see the components of the curriculum. Remember, I got a question when I played the song of uh, Idir. And now these days, Idir has an international aura. First, how will I start my unit? I've, I've selected something about book four. What does the first guiding? We have Algeria and we have the world. Why should I learn English in Algeria? We've decided. We have introduced three main guiding principles that we broke into nine. The three mains, what kind of English? What kind of teachers? and teaching and kind of us. Now in the context of globalization, I should know all my life I have to teach about Big Ben and the Golden Gate. We did it a lot of times. Now I want to tell you about my country and I want to get acquainted with yours because our students the mobile generation, they interact daily, mainly in this pandemic of COVID-19. And they use English, whatever, with a small amount of English. What does this principle, English facilitate a two-way communication with the world? I should know, right? During my training, one of my trainer, Kathleen Grace, just asked us the question, why are you teaching and studying English in Algeria? Just to know about us? Said, about the English culture. But there are other countries that speak English, African countries, countries from Latin America, Right. And if you make an analysis, some of some teachers, unfortunately, don't have sent me emails. They are conducted a PhD about our textbooks. I could with some others 
I'm overwhelmed by work these days with a very bad health. So you will find throughout the sequence, this principle is applied in all the sequences. In sequence, I'm, I've taken book four. We've introduced universal landmarks and local landmarks. You're telling me about the houses of parliament in England, okay? I will tell you about in Medrasen. I will tell you about Jmila. I will tell you about our mosque. But the problem is, I will use English. But English, you say, okay, but here my student will describe. And in your lesson, when I take it, I am sure that I will find this principle. Oh, this teacher did well. His students spoke about universal landmarks and local landmarks. We have, we know, as Professor Belgesen Mahaba said, our, our students know about the world and not the world. We have introduced some universal outstanding figures, Picasso, Sinan, Michelangelo, and Shakespeare. We have introduced Katib Yassin, Malik Haddad, Muhammad Deeb, our writers. I went to the library of the American Congress and I saw their books there. And I was proud. I was there with 25 secondary school students who were proud of their Algerian outstanding figures. Okay, the same we can speak about Obama, Yarauda from Palestine, Zohar Adrif, Bashir Ibrahim, Mufdi Zakaria, right. So we say, how about your writers? You can ask to 10 years ago, I feel very sad. Our students knew a lot of things about Najim Mahfouz, Al Manfaloti. And after the, the problem that happened between Algeria and Egypt, who are our brothers, they started to know about the Algerian literature. Zuhal Adrif has written an outstanding book published in the United States. The book is called Inside the Battle of Algiers. She allowed us to use a text and we have used it. And she recorded the text. They are known everywhere, outstanding figures, and they're not here. Professor Belkasim Habba said, let them achieve their dream. And he did. He was a student in the primary school and the middle school in Mahayar. Then he studied, I think, in Al-Wad or Tugud in the secondary school. Then in Bab Zawar. And now he's in the United States. One of the great scientists in the world. The Algerian school gave him background and his intelligence. And he's helping now the young, the young boys to create their startup and the very humble man. I'm sorry that we introduced him, the whole sequence in book three, it was about him when they found nothing to say about the book, they said, delete. 
the sequence about prophecy. It was one of the, my saddest day. And I said, he's Algerian. This is what the constitution said in article 32. The Algerian community living outside Algeria is a part. And I sent him the original because I wanted our students to know their icons to be modest. Anyway, we will have a next webinar in September with him. And sequence we have the universal values. We said that we don't teach values, we demonstrate them. Our friends in uh, Islamic education or more education, civic education, will deal with it. Here we demonstrate. The questions you choose will help you demonstrate that. Food in the world. La last time I presented a nation situation and food in Algeria. I tell you something that happened to me. When you write the curriculum, you have to select. With my team, we had a problem and there was a polemic whether to introduce in the Lexis the word ham. Oh, Frederick, please don't choose this, introduce it. We are a Muslim country. We did not agree in a friendly way. I left Algiers, I came back home. The next day I got a phone call from my friend. Are you still convinced that we should use ham? I said, yes, deeply convinced. We met. And sometimes when I walk in the street of Basharah or Algiers, and I found, well, everywhere in Algeria, fast food. When you enter, people say, yes, what can I serve you? What do you wish? A hamburger. Okay. Okay. They are served. Now, from those students, perhaps 10 will travel. 10 will find a fast food. They enter. And they say, give me a hamburger. And in the hamburger, he will find pork, not ham. And my friend said, now you convinced me. This is the cultural awareness. And in our textbook, you will find the cultural dimension. Tolerate, do not reach. I, I cannot. I respect your belief, but I do not embrace your belief. But our learners should know. Sometimes in book two, a teacher say, sir, names of vegetables and fruits. I said, they should know them. I was with people in Britain when they brought to them the menu they could not understand the names of some vegetables. This is a problem solving situation. Right. This is very, you think over it, okay. And sequence three, the table manners. When we sent the first group of Algerian students, all of them, I told you last, coming from very poor areas, we had orientation with them. Their English was good, but it's not sufficient. It's the cultural aspect. Here, when you invite someone at home, you insist, whether he's Algerian or a foreigner, please, I want to say it in Arabic. Okay, and I say, in the American families, you will have a warm welcome, but when they put the lunch at lunch time, they will not say, 
please eat. It's here, the food is here to be eaten. And this is very important to understand that. And the school should prepare that. We are not in a grammar school. And now I want to quote Krashen. And I want just, they are with me here in the room, uh, Amira, Lamia, and Sarah and Said. Uh, I want to thank them for their work. And Amira asked me, she's preparing her uh, last year master and say, we know everything, but we cannot apply. And I said, this is the question. Crushing Dixit, whenever there is a theory, there is someone to teach it through a textbook. You dealt about crushing other university, but your role is to put it into practice. And we met with friends at the UNS. And said, it's very good, our teachers know everything. Different theories and approaches. That's why I wish we had this workshop, not webinar, but a workshop where you will produce. So we will understand that whether you are doing it or not. So now the second part, my sequence analysis. Will it be grammar oriented? Our friend uh, Abdelghani said grammar lovers. Will it be topic oriented? Will it be vocabulary oriented? Will it be, sorry, I repeated it, will it be competency oriented? And in fact, it's all not grammar oriented topic. Look at the problems with the students, the back students. When you correct our friends from the secondary school, when correct the papers, they do poorly in reading and in the section mastery of language, and that they get very good marks in the written section because they are not produced. They have learned by rote, by heart, a paragraph. They said, we will have something about education, ethics in business on the Sunday side. This is a mess. This is a mess. A topic or a grammar vocabulary are melted, right? The last is discourse oriented. Life is discourse. Life is not grammar. If you travel, you are at the airport of London, you are not going to say conditional type one is used right. And in your class, okay, deal with it, but the priority is to discourse, <laughs> four types, narrating, describing, all our life, right? Because a competency is built. What is the competency-based approach is built on social constructivism. There is a book I can summarize it in three sentences. You have a little brother or sister, they drink water. Water is cool. This is the notion they have of water. Then you go to the seaside, the water becomes salty, a new concept. Then the child will grow up and water will become H2O. The concepts, it's kind of scaffolding. We do not erase. The competency-based based approach has not erased the use of vocabulary or grammar of topics. But they are melted. The priority is the discourse. Well, the answer is obvious. It will be discourse-oriented. What will my learners be able to do? Not what my learner will know. All of us know. Ask a mechanic, he will go to Google, 
tell me something about the simple past, you will find it. How will my textbook help me implement and illustrate the components of the curriculum in the classroom practice? And believe me, some teachers, I'm against giving a lesson plan to a teacher. They can write it themselves. They sent it to me. I say, it's perfect. When they really saw, I said, look, this is what you did. You, all the points are in your, a teacher from Sugahara sent me one month ago a lesson. She wanted me to evaluate it. I said, hat off. You introduced, perhaps the teacher did not know that she is doing that, but the teacher and her inspector read the curriculum. And there was a training on the curriculum and putting into practice the curriculum. This is learning how to learn. I will not the classroom do this activity, second activity. I love the enthusiasm of the, the teachers. <coughs> the shift from teaching to learning. How will I learn? How will I put this principle of the competency-based approach in class and outside the class? We make an analysis of two. Okay. Do you remember the second slide? Oh my God, there are 64 uh, listening tasks. How can I do? I was in Galma and I, my uh, greetings to Gelba. And when I started my workshop, I was met with this question. And I was expecting this question. 64 listening tasks. How can we do that? It's wrong. I give you here in front of you the tasks that are re related to listening, the tasks that's related to writing in I listen and do with the numbers of the tasks. Leave the PowerPoint, okay, and you can check. And we did it in the, all the wheel I had where I went. Okay, to answer this question, oh my God, 60, right. But you need to understand how the competency-based approach work. And then I will go with the task. So I'm looking the PowerPoint. Can you be patient with me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then, okay. And then all the tasks related to cross curricular competencies. Remember the title Learning How to Learn. You will find in the book if the book is in front of you exchange, check, work in groups, all these are related. Here I have selected sequence two. And the task related to cross references, mainly when you reach the end of the sequence, and I think and write, they have to go back to task one, two, three in the listening or in reading. 
everything is good. Now, when you read a book, mainly at the university, each time at the bottom, they refer you to another page. And the school, the Algerian school, alhamdulillah, should prepare our learners for that. You can do it, or I can send it with it. I made to the teachers. I said, go. And we had a workshops in Tanwila when we showed the evidence that not all the tasks are for listening. Right. So be the experts. Let the experts sleeping inside you surface. Now we go to the second, my pronunciation tools and products. Remember the survey I conduct. We are not dealing with phonetics at that level. We are dealing with the sound system. Before going to the secondary school, our students should know the sound system, mainly in terms of vowels, consonants, diphthongs, diphthongs. This was skipped in the previous years of books or textbooks. Here, you expose them to the different sounds. Help of the student identify them while interacting. You think it's listening in the classical way, but the way you identify in the listening, the main grammar points, the main, the target sound system. In my pronunciation tools, you have identified them implicitly. And then you will deal, give explanation. We have provided the explanation in my pronunciation tools. And then activities I pronounce. And the, fourth, the first time in the Algerian textbooks, we have contextualized pronunciation as in real life. The rubric consolidate also the main rules in an explicit way. So you say, a student say, leaf, not life. You are doing with formative assessment, not interrupting. And then in my pronunciation tools, they will understand the different sounds. And we have provided many tasks and it's up to you to choose. My grammar choose the same thing. Once the main grammar points have been identified, you say, listen and do the activity. Where did the writer go? How old was he? What did he visit? The student can understand. But you as expert, you're dealing with the narration. You're dealing either with the, the consolidation of the simple past or as a new structure. We provided in the book map the grammar points that need to be reviewed and the new grammar points. These are, these are your prerequisites. And in the receptive skills, in pleased way through oral interaction, interpreting, written. In a listening, I said we are not a skill-based approach. You can do, listen and fill in the table, then work with your friend. It is done in an explicit way, and then up to you focus. For example, last time, we didn't have time. I wanted to show you the, and I forgot, the situation that I presented about childhood memories. What is new? Only the superlative. What's the most memorable day? And a bit the present perfect, present perfect was seen. Just to see when you make an analysis,
of your initial situation. I practice consolidation of the grammar points and vocabulary dealt with previously. And remember that they are used in context in which they are presented, they cover a part of the exit portfolio. I am in my school, we are teachers. Okay, let's prepare the whole sequence. A sequence is not to be prepared day after day. You should have a comprehensive vision. Comprehensive means general, a comprehensive vision. You think at the conceptual level and then you choose the tools. It's very easy. You have tasks that will help you a lot. I can have five, six, because we have no other material outside. And then say, you said learning how to learn. How did my student work today? Have they working in pairs, group? Or the, did I deal with uh, peer assessment? Yes, when you visit the class. When, when, when can you, what's the evidence that they dealt with peer assessment? When they swapped their production. These are the cross-curricular competencies that prepare for life. I read them too. Oh, we got many, many. They say, text is very long. You are right and you are wrong. I tell you something, my training. I was asked by Scott and Bernie, who is still alive. And he said, what are the most difficult texts? All my team said, Long text. Okay. He didn't say yes or no. He kept on his workshop. And after the break, he gave us a short text, very short text, three sentences or four. And he asked us to prepare a reading lesson with all the criteria of reading lesson. It was impossible, even for him. And to show you from a scientific uh, point of view, the shortest texts are the most difficult text to deal with. Now, why? Our students do not read a lot. You can find in I read and do many tasks. This is to prepare them for the exam writing. Remember last time your friend, PhD student, or I don't know, said, Sir, I hate writing. And I told her, if you hate writing, it means that you don't read. And she said, I think, yes. If students don't read. Sometimes I'm not here to teach you about reading. When I started training teachers, I went to someone and I said, could you please prepare a reading lesson? He said, sir, help me out. No, 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 said, as you used to do. And during the debate, all the attendants said, very good lesson. And I asked the, asked the question, very simple question. I said, was it a reading comprehension lesson? This was with the old books, or a vocabulary lesson. And in a shy way, they all of them said vocabulary. It was reading a text and explaining. If the students, our kids, are not given the opportunity to read and exploit a text, then they cannot write. We give the maximum of tasks. Some deal with different types of reference, inference, opinions, and something also to prepare the Algerian student for international exams, such as PISA and TIMS. Algeria takes part in these exams. Many developed countries, European countries, are ranked badly in these exams. 
though they are very developed countries because the school has not prepared them. All our tasks in book four, they obey to the international standards and the test items also, the criteria, PISA and TIPS, and Algeria takes it. So you may say, this is the question I have not, we cannot finish the program. You have 20 activities or tasks in reading, select. Let's see, I'm not saying two or three will help me deal with a narration. Three tasks will the vocabulary has a relation with a dream career, then it's good. This is planning. There is a, a planning at the conceptual level, uh, level. We talked about it in the first presentation. And the planning, the planning is not day by day or a day before you go to class. Don't worry about whether I have not found my lesson plan, but plan it. Plan it with criteria. If you are four or three or two in a middle school or in secondary school, if you share, you will get very good results. Not mainly now with the, 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 the internet, you can find plenty of, plenty of things. Right, and select what fits you. This is a very big challenge. They ask me, how can I teach? I learn to integrate and I feel very frustrated. And I say, have you read the guide? And explain it quickly. You have been teaching over four weeks or five weeks, the content, the content, okay. Now, everything, they, have, they will reinvest it in situation. Let's say you taught in this sequence, the simple past, the superlative, the vocabulary, uh, describing uh, heroes. Okay, this is knowledge, this is knowledge. So the situation I'm going to deal with previously, this is what I learned throughout the sequence. Good. This is skills. It has nothing to do. This is a linguistic term, which means even the British or the American use it. Skills means savoir-faire. Okay. You taught me the simple past. In this situation, I will reinvest the simple past. But what for? It's right to report. Okay, I, uh, uh, you asked us to report about an event that happened in your town. Let's say about the behavior of how did people behave after five o'clock, the, the requirement of the, the quarantine. Okay, those students will report they did good, but the attitude, here the value is honesty. This is a future journalist. When he reports, he should be honest. He report a football match, he will not say, oh, the team of Oran was better than the team of Belabes. They should not. And this phase should be conducted in groups. And we have provided a table what they need, right? They don't need everything they learned. But in this situation, this is what they learn to solve it. This is preparing for writing. It's like a, in the football match, we have training. This is integration. They say, for example, oh, the team, our team is very bad at uh, shooting penalties. We will work on penalties. We will work on the defense. Okay, each time in the group, you will debate, but during the match, nobody will be with you. 
than I think and write. Why have we written I think? Because writing is a thinking process and the writing is not testing, open your web. Some teachers do everything, all the steps. When they come to writing, oh, now you're right. This phase is meant to process and product writing. I told you last time that the process, how I know to write, the end product is very easy. And the situation suggested, uh, writing should be taught before it is tested. Don't say do it and you collect the papers then. The situation suggested are meant for individual writing and assessment. Now, you will assess your, you will assess your teaching learning process throughout the students, the learners production. We have provided two and we have explained also the process writing. I was very surprised from a teacher from a small town in the Wilaya of Portugal who wrote to Rawlings well, he's a student and they got it. This is writing in a communicative way. And even Zara, they volunteered, right? Despite her age to receive, right? You can write to a foreigner and you can write to an Algerian about the experience. This is the first guiding principle in the curriculum. You will find it real, read well. cultural dimension. And I would like to thank Dalal, who was a PhD in my team. And her PhD was about cultural awareness and issues. And she succeeded to leave her print in the course book as all of them. Now I can, this is very important told you last time that we deal with summative assessment, uh, diagnostic assessment, perhaps, and summative without any training. What shall I do with the data collected? The phase is very important as it deals. In previous, previous books, you find very good grids, but with yes and no. And sometimes students want to finish the activity, just they kick whether a yes or no. We ask them to support, support me. It means some cannot know the difference between how much, how many. Now, once you collect the data from the learner's responses, be it good or weak, it will help you reshape your teaching learning process. You will focus on the common and then ask yourself, what worked? If it this, okay, what hindered? Hindered is not negative. What shall I make it better perhaps? Perhaps I still have problem in the comparative with countable and countable, but countable and countable in the process of comparing and the big framework of the exit profile describing, describing prices during Ramadan. And then from that, <coughs> you set a remedial plan. Remedial plan is not when you give the marks of a test or an exam. Formative assessment is a continuous. You can, on the spot, it could be done orally. Oh, leaf in my town is difficult. Oh, writing, is it difficult? Life, your life, ask him to repeat. But those error writes, as a scientist said, or big language said, an old error is an old, but a new truth is a truth. And then what we were not used with after the remedial, what happens? Deal with moderation. What do you need to adjust? 
I saw very good reflective journal when I was working with teachers. And sometimes teachers speak their minds, whether they are happy or whether they are not happy. And say, today I feel sad because this lesson required some visuals to introduce vocabulary. And I feel that today my students have not understood the vocabulary related to the lesson in the secondary school about the photosynthesis. This is very reflect. I play in joy. It's not playing. It is meant for relaxing, but it develops your learner's computer and documentary research skill. In the law of orientation, in the curriculum, and it is a cross curricular competence. Our learners should have very good computer skills, research skills. Okay, I need to make a project. I need to make research and not a ready-made project. If you visit cyber cafes, you find students first year, oh, can you give me a project about Ronaldo? Can you give me a project about, because school has not given them the opportunity to deal with the process, right? So play and enjoy everything has a framework and a scientific framework. You can make a song, but the song, when you listen to the song, we have introduced, we have, you have three, three songs or four in the guide with their links. If you play the song and when you listen to it, is it, is it discourse oriented? Then you can use it. Play any song. I read for pleasure. This is a challenge too. One day a teacher sent me a message and say, sir, the, the texts of I read for pleasure are long and difficult. Good, very good question. Now, what is a difficult text? What do we mean by difficult words? I'm not that good at Arabic, but I daily buy one or two newspapers in Arabic. I read. There are many difficult words. But I understand the meaning through scanning or skimming quickly. Now, when we introduced reading for pleasure, we got back to the childhood when we were mainly for my age. Student in the middle school, we were asked to take a book from the library of the school and to read it after 15 days. Oh, the childhood and the laziness. But we had very good teachers. How can they make sure that we have read the book? It's through a reading card. I agree if there are some a reading card, you need some information. Sometimes if you go to the great library of the world, you see researchers looking for a book, but looking, they're looking for specific information. They can fill in the reading card using bibliographical notes. And we train them from the second year how to use bibliographical notes. Let's say, can you sort out the, uh, sorry for the mistake, it's dream, careers, sorting out vocabulary related to childhood dream. Let's say sort out five. It's uh, about the weather. When did the story, was it in winter? In, they have to decipher the records. This is the way to make sure when we read when we read, we will be 
very competent writer. This is very important. And we have introduced, I get ready for my BOM exam, keeping in mind the current framework. We've thought of changing it, but we cannot as it is offered. This is a golden opportunity to deal with summative assessment after each sequence. And this part, even if it is testing, for us, it is formative assessment. Because you will prepare your students for the next sequence. And <coughs> throughout this and the teaching that happened, that took place, you can collect the data and identify the prerequisites you will deal with it. The prerequisites in terms of grammar, topics, or lexis. Always within the framework of the exit profile. And now, what next? There were three titles in my presentation adapting the textbook to the curriculum, making an analysis of sequence, and preparing the sequence. Preparing the sequence is your job. But I promise is my next webinar to show you how to plan your sequence. Thank you very much. And now the floor is yours. We have time for the question you would like. Please open up the debate. Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Tamrabad, for your uh, webinar about the textbook use and its challenges. Uh, I am a PhD student in the UK. Yes. I'm studying, I'm analyzing the textbook actually, but for the first year textbook, not for the fourth year. So uh, in your first introduction of the textbook, you said that you, you aim to reinforce the national identity of Algeria yes. with openness to the word. Yes. <laughs> this is in the curriculum. It's written in the curriculum. Yeah, this is just, uh, it's a direction from the curriculum to apply it in the textbook and then yeah. transfer it to the classrooms. Yes. Well, what I want to ask is that uh, whether the, the national identity with the use of a foreign language is easier to transfer to the learners instead of starting from the beginning stage of their learning uh, I mean, in Arabic or something, because in Ara I don't know if the Arabic textbook are already in that stage of reinforcing the national identity or not. But uh, one thing that I, I observed from the textbook, yes, you integrated the intercultural awareness and yes, you integrated the national identity. But one thing that is missing is the the construction of gender within that textbook, it's mm -hmm. reinforcing some stereotypical behaviors towards the careers and inspirations for learners. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you for uh, raising the point of uh, identity, who we are, the law, stated it clearly, we are Muslims, Amazir, Arabs. Okay. And the identity, you find it in all the textbooks of uh, Algeria, the new textbook. Now coming to the textbook of English, I will start with the first year. Okay, we are not going to tell them the identity. I don't know whether you attended with us last time. The first year we teach personal pronouns, the simple present, the auxiliary to be, to have, uh, numbers, 
and uh, colors. Now the way, whether in the oral interaction or in the written interaction, when you say, introduce yourself, the expected answer is, my name is Murad. I am 11 years old. I am uh, 11 years old and uh, I study in a given, in uh, let's say in Clemson and I am Muslim. I am Arab or I'm Amazigh. I speak Arabic and I speak Amazigh. And I speak also English. It's English. And in my flag, there are three colors, green, red, white. The identity is clearly defined. If you go later on, we have introduced about the main dishes in year four with the currency. The currency is a symbol of identity. The main dishes is the symbol of identity. We have, this is the national identity. Now, the question of gender, to be honest with you, we have not taught the way you are the researcher hat off to you, but we have introduced it. Now there is a big debate in Europe about gender. Just to be honest with you, you are right, perhaps we did it arbitrarily, but women, women in Algeria ha have a predominant role. Perhaps the vote. Algerian women had the vote be before the uh, Swiss women, before the American women, they took time, right? Our women had the right for divorce be be before the Italian women. Now, yesterday, perhaps as you are living in England, and I said about this, I, I, I gave a presentation in, the, uh, in a British radio about the Algerian curriculum and how we changed. And the woman who interviewed me, it was in Norwich, said now in the British curriculum, it was, we felt shame because we were glorifying the, uh, the colonial period. And yesterday I saw people in London or in other towns destroying all the statues that symbolized the colonial period. And the curriculum writers of Britain, I'm speaking about the curriculum of history, you can have a look at it as you are in Britain, they changed it, right. Now, here there are new change in the constitution, the official language, the identity should appear. But very small amount of English, when I say, you speak about your flag, it's the identity. You speak about your money, it's the identity. You speak about your language, it's the identity. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best, Wasila. Next, please. Hello. 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 Hello, who is with me, please? Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Welcome, please. Yes. Speak uh, up. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, Mohamed Taudiad from Buera. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much. So uh, first, I would like you to thank. Uh, I would like to thank you for this webinar, uh, so that the teachers uh, get the idea on how to use the textbook. Just one comment, uh, if you don't mind. No, yeah, no, no. I'm here to listen. We are in democratic setting. Uh, okay, good. Uh, uh, the textbook is just a tool to be used effectively uh, by teachers. Exactly. We all agree with it. Exactly. Because, because no textbook can fit all learners' needs, interests, level, and uh, 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 learning styles in a country like Algeria, which is a continent. Yes. Uh, another thing, when we, when we go to, to the curriculum, 
uh, and you are among uh, the, the those who uh, yeah the, those who wrote the, the curriculum and the, the support document okay so yep. when we, when we uh, when we go to the curriculum mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, if we see the page page 66 Yes, I can't hear you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Page sixty-six. When when you uh, you were talking about the textbook, mm -hmm. uh, B the textbook content. Mm -hmm. The textbook content must conform to the curriculum. This is number one. Number two, the selection of the content should be consistent with the number of teaching hours and the age of the learners. Yes. Uh, my question is. You talked about the, the number of tasks in uh, in in I listen and do section. Yes. And we know all that uh, for the first term we have 22 hours, for the second term we have 20 hours, and for the third term we have 18 hours. Mm -hmm. How can teachers select mm -hmm. or adapt from uh, and source the textbook so mm -hmm. that? Uh, not to miss uh, the, the teaching hours. This is question number okay. Uh, one. OK, don't no more than two questions because we have many people. Yes, the second one. Go directly okay, to the question. Okay. Yes. yes. Uh, thank you. OK, yes, uh, th second thank question. You. Number, number two, uh, question two is about the topics uh, across the cycle. Me, my word, and the yes. word. Yes. If we take any sequence, mm -hmm. any sequence uh, from the three first textbooks, MS1, MS2, and MS3, yes. we find that each sequence deals with a main topic, either me or my word or the word. Me yes. for the first term, my word for the second term, and the word for the third term. But when we go to the fourth year uh, textbook, we find that you started with uh, my word, then me, then uh, you started with the word, then me, then my word. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. This is. Yes, the second question. The, the, uh, yes. My question is the why. Why for the why did you uh, refer to me, my word, the word in the three first textbooks, and uh, no reference to these three topics, uh, the order. I mean, me, my word, the word in the fourth. Uh, textbook and thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> two questions are relevant. Uh, first of all, if you followed with me about, uh, I'm not here about sourcing, but about the selection. I'm applying the international standard, selecting, organizing. Okay, now, just a joke. All my life, I have been very bad at mathematics, counting. Okay. You're speaking about the number of hours. All, all over Algeria ask me this question. But you have to know that we shift from 28 weeks of teaching to 36, eight, uh, 36 weeks of teaching. If you make calculation between the previous curriculum and the actual, we gain it more hours. The school year does not finish in February. Now, if students don't know them, it's not the problem of the curriculum writing. So this is the right. Now, the number you make calculation, you divide the number of hours through each week. Mainly, you mentioned first year. We visited class, unfortunately. When there is no planning, teachers spend one week, days of the week, days of the month, numbers. We, what can we do? They started, not all of them, without reading the the curriculum and the sequences of the uh, first year are very short. Okay, this is 
very calculate then the numbers you can do it now when you finish okay and i love the second question me my world the world uh i'm sorry to send it for that our dead parents have been insulted not by you but you know by whom all right when you finish read well the curriculum it's not me, my world, the world. This concept is new. Each sequence has me, my world, the world. I was discussing with Smara Al-Hakim about what happened to us arbitrarily during the, the summer. I say, okay, they think like that. So in the first year, we have five sequences. So one, Sequence me, the second, my world, the third. Uh, I said, when we are not at the same level of understanding, we cannot agree with you. Even though we respect you a lot for your engagements towards teaching. And then this me, you said, book one, book two, book three. When you write a course book, you have what we call the selection of content. I asked one of my trainer, Scott Turnberry, I said that before writing the books, I say, when you write a book, the, when you select the Lexis and the, when you dispatch, I have problem with dispatching the Lexis throughout the book. I remember this answer was this question requires the gathering of a committee of experts. This was in 2003. And then with the experience training, we knew how to dispatch this. So you can read about this. I had a training about this notion, me, right? Why? Experts evaluated our secondary school coursework. There was a committee of experts. And they said, these are your students. You want to take them from the me to the world, forgetting their world. You know, the question was very debatable and we agreed, okay. But when you agree or you disagree, there should be an evidence by writing a sequence where you can apply this. So Mr. Mohammed, and not to be polemic, we don't have one for me, one for the world. And I think uh, our sister Merzuki, who writes a lot, who does a lot, posted something, a very good posting about the notion about me, my world. So if you take now, and we can stay in touch. You make an analysis of any sequence, you will find the me, the, the world, my world and the world. And what the expert called the inbuilt syllabus or the hidden syllabus, right? So it's very easy. Take any, go and attend the demonstration class. And you will see this. Make an analysis of any. You are referring about the topics across competencies. In the curriculum, we have written topics and it's up to you. We are not topically oriented. We are not grammar oriented. We are discourse oriented as all the countries of the world. And you can see. Thank you for your uh, questions. And I think that I answered also questions that you posted during summer about how can this, you can now count and you will see how many tasks were listening cross curricular. And for us, they are, they cover the three competencies. Thank you for your participation. Next. Mr. Tamra. 
Mr. Tamabata. Mr. Tamabata. Yes. Yes, I can. Yes, please. Who is speaking with me? Aziz from Jilfa. Can you check, please? Uh, yes, uh, Khaled. I can't hear you. Could you please speak up? Uh, Can you hear me, Mr. Tabarabat? Mohammed. Mohammed from there. Now, yes. Yes, now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The floor is yours. Yeah. This is. Okay. Uh, I'm just telling you, telling you because it's not me who gives the floor, it's the engineers who are with me. Okay. Yes. Welcome, please. Okay. Your this question. is Andreski again from Tiziuzu. Ah, no me? garden today. <laughs> Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. All right. You. Well, thank you for this uh, amazing session. Mohammed. Right? Yeah, I would make a comment first, you know, before I ask my questions. Um, you know, all what you have said was <laughs> very rich in terms of content. Um, the language changes. It's a comment I'm just giving right now. The language changes. So yes. we as teachers, we as didactic, teachers or even um, linguists or whatsoever, we need to change as the language changes. Uh, the other comment is that I attended, I attended uh, a workshop last year in the US embassy and it was about storytelling. And in this storytelling, they were given um, one theory that they called uh, the theory of four C's. And among these C's, it started with the connection. Like the connection we need, I mean, the question is, do we have to connect, to connect the textbook accordingly, to yeah, the yes. textbook, accordingly to what the students are leaving. And also we have the second one, which is the context shall we bring a context that the students, whether in college or in high school, are connected with, so that to bring this change and closure, closure to the content that we are delivering them, whether through the textbooks or even what the teacher is adapting, adapting, uh, during the lesson in order to make the lesson more, I mean, received and more adapted. The second question is, yes, sir, is, the, is the textbook more reliable, when, is the textbook more reliable when it is, when it is additioned with the video at the end of the lesson? Thank you, uh, Mr. Tamarat. It's a pleasure Mohammed again. Uh, thank you, Mohammed Arasti. Right, uh, uh, a very professional uh, question. Connect the textbook with uh, the world they are living in. Okay. The law of orientation, if you have read it, and I can, <coughs> I can summarize it, everything that you write, and I will tell it to you in the language of Italy, whether in French, taken from Itar Hayat al or Le Cadre de Vie, or within the framework of the chart. That is, and the question also, your question, has a relation with the needs. That's why, if you have read the curriculum, the exit profile we have read meaningful situation. Meaningful not to the teacher, to, to the world of the students. Some linguists, let me open bracket, went and they made a study in Kenya with a tribe, tribe that has never been surfaced to life. So, the experts, anthropologues and linguists were there. They didn't know the language. So 
they, the, the guy translated, the head of the tribe pronounced this, this word in the language, Sayobona. The linguist said this. What does it mean? It means, are we invisible? Have you taken us into consideration? The speaking about Kenya. And from that, the linguist said, start about speaking about the needs. Are the needs of the children as the needs we think? Certainly not. The world of the children is not certain. I tell you a story, and my project is uh, between the hands of the Ministry of Education. My son, speaking about because it has a relation, when my son entered the first year in the middle school, perhaps all years, they asked me to sign a paper about the school regulations. I read it. I signed it. Everything was negative. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. If you do it, you will have. The, you will be punished. I asked the head if I can gather 10 students. Three good, very good, excellent students. Three students with problems of discipline and one or two violent students, according to. And I met them, gave them a paper, and I say, can you write what you think are 10 of your rights? They wrote them in Arabic. They wrote the rights within the school context. I met them a week later and asked them to write their duties. They wrote the duties. And in my foolishness, I translated them into English. And I sent a letter at that time. Kofi Annan was the head of the United Nations. I wrote, the Declaration of the Children's Rights was written by adults to children in 1959, two days after his staff, cabinet, they responded to me and they directed me to the, uh, the Bureau of UNICEF in DBC in Algiers. They wanted to see my project. I sent them the project. They liked it. They said there is a conference in the United States in Tampa, in Florida in 2006, if I'm not wrong, or five. Can you attend to present your project? It was the TESOL conference called. I said, yes. OK, I said, they come. They arranged everything, the uh, plane ticket, and I presented it. And now, if you see, book four, I introduced the rights and duties in the AFL class and made a video, if we meet, I will show you the video. I interviewed many, many people all over the world about the notion of children's rights. Okay, you can read. I have the right to see the paper of my exam after the correction. I have the right to use the lab, the computer lab, and you can check it. This is, it has to do with motivation. And when you speak about the language, Professor Haba last week spoke about Sony, which is a company. And perhaps you know this. They say what we are teaching now, our learners will become meaningless in five years in terms of technology and discovery. And as you know, Language is not static, right? Language evolves with the given situation. That's why everything is contextualized with the situation and rights. And the storytelling 
perhaps here, and you live in, a, in an area, if you can have the, the of uh, Muhammad, Muhammad, the Isafra, or the Isafra, sorry, or the pronunciation, you can use them, right? Now, uh, how can it make it re reliable? It's, if you have followed well my presentation, we spoke about the teacher's curriculum. In his class, he can select the appropriate video. I saw wonderful work on Facebook where many teachers, when we had a, about a, a trip to the world, they, 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 they described it as in a perfect way. Language evolves, you are right. Motivation is very uh, important. Reliability. And I'm giving my experience from local textbook writers, and they are known throughout the world. And right, not only me, all my team, all my team. Because you can also ask point of view. Sometimes we agree, sometimes we do not. The best thing, as I said, tolerate each other, love each other, accept each other, respect each other, but not reject. We have not to be honest when sometimes you need to conduct a needs analysis. A needs analysis costs, costs millions. But tell your experience without a previous book, we introduced a pre-sequence that we called you know English for the first year students. How? When you ask teachers, you say in the environment, you go through and you find the word fast food, computer, pizza hut, some words that they already know. Sometimes you say, <coughs> you a very good question about the reality. We ask teachers, why do you teach numbers from zero to nine? They know the concept in Tamazigh or in Arabic. What do you want them to do with the numbers? Say, but sir, so you are happy when, no. I teach numbers to allow a first year student to make a phone call if ever he uses English. Thank you very much, Mohammed. Okay, Mr. Tamalada. Hello. Yes. Mr. Mr. Tamalada. It's Mr. Aziz yes. from Jilfa. Welcome, uh, Aziz. Welcome. Welcome, Aziz. Thank you for this presentation. <coughs> Welcome. Uh, I, I have got two questions, if you don't yeah. mind. Yes, yes, we are here for that. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I think that using uh, extra books like New Headway, New Interchange, uh, facilitates learning uh, easier uh, than using the course book? What do you think? Okay, very good question. This is the first one, the second one. Yes, yes, uh, I'm writing the second one, yes. Okay, concerning the, the lesson plans, some teachers uh, use others' lesson plans to teach just because they are lazy, okay, if you, if you, okay, if you agree. And some of them use the lesson plans for copying and improving. What's your opinion? Okay. Thank you. I, I love the first question, okay? Uh, some teachers are using uh, a new headway, okay. I go back to history. When the first Algerian textbook was written by Mr. Kisserli. We met in Colea and because after one year, and at that time we had no internet, but the negative criticism overwhelmed us. Okay, why? He introduced a unit where he spoke about the battle of Jebel Bohansh, about the revolution, but the aim was narrating. And they blamed him. When he was late, 
in Kolei and he came and said, I dixit his sentence. The Algerian war of liberation is deeply anchored in the psyche of our children, right? The French will say in their books, Nos ancêtres les Gaulois, they are proud of this. Now, now the uh, headway plans, a new headway. Yesterday, I received an email from a PhD student. I don't know him. He got my email through someone else. Uh, and the question was, I was a little bit, um, I was not acquainted. He's, he was about imperial, imperialism ling, linguistic. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, understand really, but he will send me the questions to help me in PhD research. I think this nation is a free. You and me studied in Algerian universities. We are the product of that. We trained thousands and thousands of teachers and through teachers, students. Now you can get in touch with them. I took 25 inspectors to Britain. We went to School of Excellence. We visit three schools, School of Excellence and School with Problems of Discipline. In the School of Excellence, they, are, they allowed us to visit classes. I said, I want to visit a class of foreign languages, French. For us, English, it's English. For them, it's French. Two inspectors were with me. 12 students, interactive board, all the resources, lesson 45 minutes. During 45 minutes in the lesson, in the lycée of exam, not a single student made a sentence. When I went out, I said to the inspectors, you should be proud of your teachers with other situation, with overloaded classes, 45 sometimes. And if you have 10 students who speak English, interact, you should be proud. The Algerian textbooks are Algerian textbooks. If they are want to write, uh, I, I, I will quote two things. One in Arabic, the second one is from Malik bin Nabi. There is no colonialism, but there, are, there is a readiness to write. And five years ago, a mission from the UK came to Algeria. They visited classes in Algiers, Batna, and City. They went to the ONEC, and then they went to the NPS. They showed them the, the books, the Algerian, the previous. And they said, why don't you buy our books? And I think, Mr. Lejaj, you understand. They don't want to go deeper on that. The second question, I do not agree. Teachers are not lazy. I cannot say this. I am very positive. I told you when a teacher is resistant, it is that you want to understand. Sometimes we had outstanding trainers, but trainers from very, uh, very great university, but when they train, the trainers after the break, they are, they don't come. But when there is someone else from another country, they are happy. I get back to what Milan. Perhaps here, K 
curriculum writers, textbook writers, they did their job. The, the now the floor, it's up to the trainers to train teachers. I told you last time what Walter said, the more they are enlightened, the more you are free. Mohammed, you are doing great work in your area or never say, right, try to understand teachers. They spent summer insulting our parents. We have not reacted. We have not reacted, right? We visited Wilayas and we gave the answer on the spot. We tried to, it hurt us because most of the parents are dead and a Muslim should not be. But please secure, secure your teachers. Teachers without means are doing miracles. There is a teacher, I'm not speaking about the Wilaya because you will say it also. In Bejaya, in a small town called Tizin Berber, in the daira of Bukhas, a teacher is doing miracles. In Sukharas, in Sadarata. Right. In Tanas, the first Wilaya I visited, the first lesson, right? You can ask the inspectors, Mrs. Mamouni in Mohammed Saleh, really. I saw that with my eyes. I remain optimistic. I am Algerian Allah. Thank you, Mohammed. Hello. Hello. Greetings. Uh, am I audible? Yes, Abir? Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tamrabit. First of all, um, I would like to extend my thanks to you and to the MBA Algeria campus. You are truly an inspiration to the TAFL community, and uh, I'm very excited to be here among you today. My name is Abir Ghaniyat. I am a secondary school teacher from Tbissa. Uh, I have been teaching for the last six years. And uh, I would like to um, talk about something. And uh, by the end, I just would like to hear your opinion on the matter, if it's possible, because it's been a yes, uh, year for, for me. Yeah, yes, to... yes, please do. So um, I have been conducting a research uh, towards the democratic Algerian curriculum development through secondary school EFL teachers' involvement. And I have been advocating a democratic model to curriculum development in Algeria that involves teachers by combining top-down government directives with bottom-up teachers-based creativity. And I was trying to explore and identify perceptions of secondary school AFL teachers on their implementation of the 2003 curriculum reform. Mm -hmm. Because I just felt that there are a lot of barriers to our autonomy and involvement in the curriculum development in order to pave the way for understanding and planning towards such involvement. And, you know, throughout this research of mine, I have sent out questionnaires for teachers and interviews with EFL secondary education inspectors uh, online. And my findings advocated the existence of imbalanced power relation between the government and teachers with the former controlling and dictating curriculum and basically excluding teachers like myself from the whole developmental process. And we need to be reminded that we're not textbook oriented, we're curriculum oriented. We can completely uh, lose the usage of the student textbook and just create our own textbooks up in the curriculum suggested by the government and the orientation law. But throughout my years, and I can say this honestly, I believe that even the curriculum, we just face so many hinders into implementing those uh, frameworks, especially the Algerian English framework that basically encouraged that the student should ultimately develop a communication competency. But I just feel that the curriculum is not really effectively communicating with the real life setting. My question for you, will there be a chance for Algerian teachers like myself to be involved in a curriculum development or will we always be within this framework where we just get the direction from the government and just teach 
something that is not really that successful. Because for me, I just can honestly say that we are producing at least 20% of students who are capable of communicating English. The rest is just, as many of us uh, confirms, they are having a lot of issues and they will not gain any competency in terms of communicating with English effectively in the real world. And uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, uh, Mrs. Raniette. Uh, you really touched the point. First, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the curriculum of the secondary school was written before the law was issued. The curriculum of the secondary school was written in 2003 and the, uh, the law was issued in 2008. So you can by yourself notice the big disconnect between the reality and uh, the content of the curriculum. And the reform has not reached secondary school yet. Now you raised two questions. The principle of the democratic principles in the textbook. I will speak about the textbook of the middle school. The role of a teacher of English is not to say this is democracy. It's the, the job about the teacher of history or civic education, all right. But as a researcher, and it is a piece of advice, go through the textbook, go through the the, 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 the task, make an analysis. You will find out by yourself that it will allow democracy at a very, very small level. When you can, when you say the teacher, wait for your turn, work with your friends, socialize, accept each other. It's the apprenticeship of democracy. Democracy should not be imported. There are universal values related to democracy. And we have our own values. Your research will, should work on that. So when you make an analysis of the middle school, you will find it throughout. In the course book and when teachers, if you have to go to a class and visit the class and the way a lesson is conducted, you will see when we train, for example, the word no should be banned from class. Even there is, it means respecting, accepting, not blaming. These are some of the criteria of democracy. When I listen to you, when I don't reject you, remember what I said to your friend, Sayobona, am I invisible? Listen to me. When you neglect a student sitting at the back, when you cannot recall the names of your students, build a safe environment. You can read our curriculum and compare it to many curricula in the world. You will see that we have many commonalities and many differences. All right. Within the framework of the Algerian life and values, you are from a different religion. I accept, I respect as you have to respect mine. The topics introduced in the middle and the secondary school, if you decipher them, they will allow to speak about democracy. When you can conduct a survey about money laundering, <coughs> about ethics in business, right? And, but you are right, the, the curriculum 
does not of the secondary school does not match with the law because the law was written after. Now the second burning question, will there be a chance to be a monk? Good. We have this question. In Algeria, there are, two years ago, 11, nearly 11,242 middle school teachers. And sometimes they blame us. Why we are not represented in the curriculum board? I'm sorry to tell you that they are represented. In each GSD, there is a middle school teacher, there is a secondary school teacher, there is a middle school inspector, there is a secondary school inspector, and there is a PhD in the curriculum board when I worked with them. We had the uh, Mrs. Uh, Benzerman, Faisal Benzerman, who is well known, graduated from reading, specialized in linguistics. We cannot have 11, uh, uh, 11,000 teachers. Perhaps this is the, the, the oldest motto. If it's not me, it's bad. In the textbooks, you can see in my team, I have a middle school teacher. I have a middle school inspector. I have a specialist in textbook design. And I have a university teachers. Previous year, I can give you the name. I had with me Mr. University from Msila, Mr. Boazi Tayyip. His writings are now in the library of the American Congress. I can give you the example of the greatest course book writers, perhaps in the world, Mr. Shin Abdel Fattah, who has written with our former teacher, a great book about the anthology of Algerian and Maghribi writers. When I hear you, right, you are the product of the Algerian school and I am proud for you. Just be optimistic. Thank you. Yes. Next, please. <coughs> yes. Uh, hello again. This is Mohandroski again. Uh, this talk about ah, this. now I see your garden. Yeah. Yes. Well, this is uh, this picture was taken in Virginia, in the Good. United States. In Alexandria. Uh, no. Not exactly in Alexandria, but it was in Charlottesville. Okay. In the, in the University of Thomas Jefferson. Yes. Well, my this time is not a question, but is a request. Yes. Uh, my request, uh, would it be okay if you organize the session about school bullying, which is a big issue nowadays in our okay. schools and classrooms? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Tamar. Thank you. I go back to the cultural context. As a former secondary school teacher, we had many foreigners, among them French. And during the councils, they hear uh, this, this uh, word, élève indiscipliné, élève mouchon. And by, by time, they knew the meaning of the right. And they said, said, you students really are kind of angels. In Paris, when you go out of school, they wait for us. And bullying is a concept that happens maybe in the Western world. Still, to, up to now, we have discipline. We have some violence at that very scale, okay? But it's good, right? It's good to meet students. I told you about children's rights. I met students who had problems with discipline and we discussed. I, I put the results in the book of 
the textbook uh, year four, right? I'm not against, I will be happy to be a participant uh, with you, but I favor the priorities because there are ready-made topics in Europe. It depends our society, right? We don't have, if you go to, I saw classes in Harda, you see the discipline. You see, perhaps there is violence in the big towns like Algiers, like city, but it's very proportional. There is no need, but you can. But whatever is, we should listen. I faced the problem of discipline as a teacher. Students who do not want to study, they don't. I tried everything as I was very young. And then I try to involve them. I say, Mohammed, you know, I'm very bad drawer. Can you bring me some pictures related to health or pollution? And I involve them here, involve them. But the topic is right. But Mohammed is, as we said, it's the notion, me, my word, the world. Perhaps we can try to solve problems in our comfort zone, go out from the comfort zone and try to understand the people, understand the people. <laughs> Professor Habba said, let them achieve their dream. Why should you ask someone for, from Tamanas to go to Algiers to prepare his startup? Right. This is very important. Thank you. The topic, I'm ready to, to participate with you, but perhaps, in Europe, bullying, they think that they are playing, but there are also, the consequences are very dangerous. Some students died of this bullying. Thank you, Mahat. Next, please. We have half an hour left. Mr. Tamrabat? Yes, welcome. Uh, this is Mohamed Shabu from uh, Gijal. All right. Uh, I'm not always here to ask greetings, Always greetings to Gijal. Part of yeah. my life. Thank you, yes. sir. Uh, I'm not here to ask a question. I just want to express how uh, honored I am to be part of your webinars, this free webinars, and also that uh, my father also, who was or who is a former teacher of English, uh, he talked about you yesterday. Uh, he said that there used to be seminars with you and uh, Mr. The General Inspector uh, in Gijel, who got his name. Uh, yes. uh, he also sends his uh, greetings and uh, kind regards. Thank you very uh, much. God bless you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, just uh, as you give me the opportunity, I will let you then. I forgot a great man, a textbook writer, private, Abdel Malik Shattar. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Shabu, can you come back? Or... Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, uh, Mohammed. Thank you, sir. If you have a question or. Uh... Okay. Send my regards to our friends there. Okay. Next, please. Hello again. <laughs> Hello. Who is your name? Uh, we're Sila. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, we're Sila. Again, for all the information you are explaining about the course book, I just want to know if you can do a competition for a local competition for learners to encourage them reading and writing in English. It's just a suggestion. Yes, this is uh, well, well, first, uh, it's up to the teachers to do it. And uh, I favor this and uh, this competition, provided that they first, uh, they have the, they have it to read. Because you know, we are an oral a society of oral tradition. And reading is an apprenticeship. Teachers sometimes 
I saw them, they, they write short stories. Sometimes they are not at the level of their learners, but I said, using the reading card, this is, we were trained like this. This, it's a very good question. And I can help my, my, get my, books for them. Yes, yes, you are, you are welcome, provided, uh, well, just to, to let you know that uh, the head of MBI will organize a great workshop in El Web, mainly for our friends there. Now we, we have the, 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 the quarantine of the pandemic, but MBI is ready to come to you, to your wilaya. So we so have much. started because this project, uh, the, this project was in our spirit uh, three months ago. We will take with us children and we will invite all the teachers of the wilaya of Elwet. Thank you, Wasim. Thank you. I'm still here with you. Because last time one friend said uh, you didn't answer my question, it was five o'clock and they had to reach home before being caught. Now we have, we have uh, half an hour. If it's okay, then we shall meet uh, next time, whatever. I'm still here till five anyway. Do you have other? Amira, please. Okay. Dia, yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello, Mr. Tamar Abbott. I am so honored to be part of your webinars. I am really so thankful to you to, to be Thank part you. of your webinars. Thank you for the roses. Who, uh, the name, please, if you don't mind. I am, yeah, I am Dihya. Uh, yes, the, the Wilaya, we want to know our friends, the Wilaya. Well, yeah, of free. course, I am, I am from Tizi Uzu. Great. Yes. Welcome. Well, I want to suggest, to suggest something to you. Yes. If you don't mind, of course. I yeah. want that you talk in another webinar, inshallah, about yeah. the teachabil teachability of the English language in the Algerian context. The teacher? Teachability. Yes. Of the Algerian, of the English language in the Algerian context. It's a, it's a, I would say, it's a very huge subject. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, listening to you or to Wasila or to all the participants, all Algerians trained in. Your English is that good. I'm not speaking only from the linguistic point of view, but from the communicative point of view. This is Algeria, okay? I don't promise. I don't promise because it requires the, the as my one trainer, the gathering of experts about this. Because I don't know that those are the able, even perhaps this topic could could be addressed to learners, right? Sometimes uh, our learners, young learners, they are very reluctant when it comes to speaking in front of an audience because they have never been given this opportunity to face an audience. Sometimes on TV, if you watch, uh, watch uh, an animator taking this from the neck, yeah. uh, 10 years, student asking you to talk, the school should give this. Before speaking about teachers, they should give the opportunity to the learners to voice their opinion. Yeah. Teachers should be given by their trainers the ability to voice their opinion. i just tell you something that happened to me as a teacher. I asked one of my students, I said, could you give me your pen, please? She gave me the pen. But she turned to her friend and said, oh, teacher made a big mistake. We don't say could, could is the past of can. Yeah. She didn't know that could was for making requests. And at that time it was the structural approach. 
She was right for her. Kud is the, the past of Khan. Now we encourage her to update their knowledge. In the, I said, competency-based training is transforming. You don't need to be trained by me. It's not the problem to know, right? But at least read what you have. Read then, then come and debate. Come and debate, we can debate together, right? Arguing is a part of the curriculum. Because sometimes when we shout, we think that we are right. I would like to send my greetings to my previous inspectors in Weda Mizur in Bejaya. One day, as a teacher, he showed me a diagnostic test in the form of a questionnaire. He said, Lunis, please be honest. Try to give me your opinion about it. I did. And he gave the same to my friend. We agreed that we liked it. He said, please don't like it because I'm an inspector. So he took his typewriter at that time, we had no computer and he typed and he said, test elaborated and I think they gave a British word, Wilson. I said, but sir, you say that will say, you will see tomorrow, you will see tomorrow. And what? And I say, what do you like about, what do you think about? Oh, no, great test, you see? Right? Now, yeah. now my, I, I feel, I feel very proud of you all, your level of English. I, I visit it sometimes when I'm invited in a wilaya, I go a day before and I go near schools, mainly middle schools. And I try speaking about children and say, are you in first year, second year? It depends if in the first year I will use the English are supposed to know and they interact orally very good now the shortcomings and the weaknesses you can remedy to them but be positive be proud of this country thank you thank you mr kamado No more questions? Okay, I will wait, uh, Amira, Lamia, Sarah, we will wait for five minutes because I don't want to be blamed. You didn't answer my question then. Okay, then you will allow me uh, to go home and uh, perhaps uh, we can interact through the social medias, perhaps there are topics you would like uh, to deal with. I'm ready to deal with them, right? Okay, next one. Next one. I can't hear, who is? Nada, yes, they told me, Nada, yes, Nada. Uh, Mrs. Nada, can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon. Okay, it's... okay welcome. Welcome, Thanks. Nada. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Dear Nada. teachers, good afternoon, sir. Uh, thanks for your, uh, your webinar and thanks for your kind invitation to be present today. I really uh, am happy to take some notes. Uh, I'm students at Sugharat University, Master One Didactics. Good. I just have a question. Thanks, sir. Just yes. have a question. Yes. Uh, what are, as new teachers or uh, how or what do teachers learn about textbook during their pre-service training? Okay. Very good. Okay. I don't know whether you are a former or an S student or not, but I think in the curriculum of the university, they have one year, one year to prepare you 
if ever you have chosen to be a teacher, there is a theoretical part and practical part. But there is a prerequisite. One day, I talked about my friends who were teachers at the IT at the end. And I said, good, you are teaching them about the four skills, what is reading, what is listening, what is speaking, good. But how can you make sure that they understand? You, are, you don't have, if you are asking them a question in an exam, what is reading or what are the steps of reading, that then you are not training someone to be a teacher. Give them a text and ask them to prepare a reading lesson. Then to see into practice. Once you have dealt with, diff because of the university, you deal with different approaches, different uh, theories, right? But then theories, as I said, illustrate them in your career. Ask questions. One day we gathered university teachers and uh, my team, and we tried to see their needs. When the students leave, and when a student leaves the secondary school with an exit profile, what should be the entry profile of the university? And they said, we don't have it. This was many years ago. Here, I asked teachers, what's the curriculum at the university? You can ask it. They will show you just an inventory of the linguistic content. We went to Mostaganem to explain the reform. We explained it. And we waited for our colleagues from the university to explain to us. And they were very honest. Do you have a curriculum? Well, it was in 2009. They said, no. This is the big challenge. OK. There should be a connect. There shouldn't be a disconnect between the primary school, middle school, secondary school, and the, the, uh, the university. And as a student, perhaps, everywhere in the world, it's self-development. Go and read. Make research. Don't wait. Don't wait to give you anything. At least the first thing to do is buy the books or ask your friends to lend you some. Get acquainted with them. Make an analysis. Make an assessment. And then you will be prepared for your career. I saw teachers, very de dedicated teachers, who cry when they fail in a lesson. They say, you, no, no, you have not failed. Just to readjust. Training is the Achilles heel, the talent achieve. Because we are not as textbook writers, we do not train. There is another, but we help. We help. I, I told you that teachers are doing miracles in very remote places. So for you, say, I, I learned it from my trainer, Mr. Berksin, with this question. Would I like to have me as a teacher? If you teach, would you like to have you as a teacher? So Sugaras, you have endless outstanding figures there. You can go and get in touch with the inspectors of the Wilaya. They will help you. Thank you very much, Nada. Okay, all right. Uh, my golden team, Saeed, Amira, Asma, and Lamia. Amira and Sarah. Sarah. Sorry, Saeed. Okay, I for, no, because I saw Asma. Okay. So, uh, uh, inshallah, uh, uh, 
we will uh, next week perhaps they said in sunday they will there will be no more quarantine i don't know whether it will be the case for my wilaya which is are a very very bad bad news in city right so i see you inshallah in the next webinar and then if possible as mbi promised we will come to wilaya and we will work and you will produce and you will believe in your capacities thank you very much and just a bunch of roses to you all bye c'est bon